You know, as you know, uh, Citizens Climate Lobby, we're all committed to building the political world for, for climate solutions and for uh, you know, a livable world. And you see our, that's our vision there on the screen. And um, you know, as empowered citizens, we do a lot of uh, talking with our neighbors, our friends, local officials about how national climate action can help ensure both you know, a healthy uh, future for us, but also help strengthen uh, the American economy. Now our chapters across the US, we have, uh, you know, it ranges from high school students to grandparents, engineers in the oil and gas industry, to farmers from Virginia to, to the you know, Central Valley in California. And we have PhDs who have spent careers studying climate change and we've got just citizens you know, like me and other people who are concerned that really just wanna know what they can do to help. The, the, the good thing is, is that we're, no matter what our backgrounds, we're all united with this commitment to make our voices heard and to really call out for a healthy climate. You know, we say this a lot, you know, we talk about, you know, how do you steer a ship that's this large, something sees and what we're trying to do, and it's really our local chapters that, that steer the ship. And, you know, it's the way that we organize ourselves uh, across the country into hundreds of local chapters across the U.S. and across the world. And each one of these chapters is building political support for climate action, and they do so with a variety of tools. And what we're uh, introducing tonight is, a, and we've been talking about for a couple of years, is really a framework for placing those tools in. And uh, we call those the levers of political will. And so you can see them on the screen right now. We're going to go through each one of those in a little more detail um, here in just a few moments. But really what the levers do is they provide a framework and a common language for us. Um, but they're not meant to be prescriptive or, or inflexible. And indeed, at times, you're going to see the, some of these things that look kind of a little murky area, like, oh, is this really this lever, that lever? It's not meant to get caught up in which lever it is. It's really just to provide a framework for us and to help us um, uh, organize our actions a little bit. But we use these levers to help us develop respectful relationships like what we've always done and to cultivate and demonstrate local support and, you know, to, to promote a climate solution that is appeal that's across the political spectrum. And, you know, we talk about political will a lot. And, you know, one of the things we cover on our climate advocate training calls, you know, really, if we, if we say that our, our goal is to create political will for a livable world, that's our vision, you know, we have a, an obligation to sort of define what that is when we say that. And so, you know, a boring sort of Webster's Dictionary definition of political will is something like this, you know, committed support among key decision makers and those who influence them for a particular policy solution to a particular problem, right? Good old Webster's Dictionary. But what does that mean exactly? Well, you know, if we just put it in our own words, that means, you know, us taking actions that's going really going to help move the member of Congress in the direction where we'd like for them to be. That's it. Move in Congress to where we want them to be. So as you remember, oops, let's not go to Ashley yet. As you remember from our intro call, uh, and if you've been a part of CCL for, for a while, you know that um, we've replicated the model for generating political will that's been used by an organization called Results. And not only that, from you know, interviewing members of Congress and people who study Congress, we really think that we have a deep understanding about what creates political will at this point. And here's why that's really important for us. It's important because we only ask our volunteers and our chapters to do the things that we know are gonna generate political will, right? Specifically, we take actions that we know will be successful in moving the member of Congress in the direction of our legislation. So that's what we talk about when we talk about creating political will and the levers of political will, that's what creates political will. And so we just organize those into five levers and again, we we'll call them the levers of political will. So in this webinar tonight, we have several CCL staffers who will briefly introduce you to one of the levers, and then we'll stop and take questions at the end. So first up tonight is the wonderful Ashley Hunt Martorano, who's gonna to talk to us about lobbying. Ashley. Hey, great, can you hear me, Ricky? We hear you great. Thanks. Okay, great. So um, I'm the marketing and events director for Citizens Climate Lobby, and I also am the liaison coordinator. Um, so lobbying um, is kind of uh, one of my uh, things, one of the hats I wear. Um, and so we believe that nothing is more important than citizens meeting frequently with their members of Congress or the staff in the office. So we meet with them often in order to show them that this legislation is something that their constituents want and then to educate them on how our proposal will impact their state or district. And this is the most highly leveraged activity that we can do. So one other role that I should mention um, is the role of congressional liaisons. 
so I'm the liaison coordinator and um, I work with the liaisons. We have about 450 of them. Um, so a CCL liaison is someone who is the representative for Citizens Climate Lobby when the group contacts a congressional staff or, or office. So since there are 535 members of Congress, CCL's goal is to have a personal liaison for two or three for each of those offices and the staff. So the role of the liaison is to build ongoing relationships with their members of Congress and their staff by maintaining regular personal contact and by coordinating the group's communication with that office. So, you know, we're really working on a complex issue, climate change. So it's really important having just that one consistent point of contact with the office for each member of Congress. It makes our process of communicating about climate change and our solution much more efficient and rewarding having that one person. Um, and that's for both CCL volunteers and the congressional staffers with who are working. Um, and I just want to add to that, um, you know, for some of the liaisons that have been doing this for a while, they uh, really have developed a good relationship with the staff in the office so much that sometimes when they go to meet with their staff, they might get a hug. Um, they might get um, a, an extra email about something that um, maybe, you know, about a baseball game if they know your favorite team. So really developing that personal relationship, you can have a, a lot of just fun and reward coming from that. Um, I just want to clarify, though, that even though we have congressional liaisons, each and every CCL volunteer is encouraged to participate by contacting their member of Congress. So through letters or phone calls, um, you know, all the different things that we do to generate political will. Um, but, you know, the liaison is kind of the person who maybe schedules appointments and follows up whenever certain things are happening um, in, the, um, in the media or in Congress with votes. So citizen participation can take many forms. It's not just the physical meeting. So you can um, send personal letters, uh, send personal emails, make phone calls. You can contact members of Congress through their social media accounts, and that might sound silly, but it's actually something we've been learning through um, our work with the Congressional Management Foundation. The members of Congress have really um, gotten on board with social media and that they um, really take seriously when their constituents are contacting them through Twitter or Facebook. And they can actually tell if you're a constituent or not from your social media accounts. They have a I don't know all the secrets of that, but they have a way of doing that and they can figure out if you are a constituent or not. So uh, they really do take, when they, when they have constituents contacting them through social media, they really do take it seriously. Um, another way to um, participate um, in lobbying is becoming a subject matter expert. So this would be um, an expert on a key aspect of carbon fee and dividends. So for instance, how the proposal impacts the district through creating jobs or stimulating the local economy or lessening the local impact. So um, now I'm gonna hand it over to Steve Volk and he's gonna introduce you to the next lever of political will. Steve? Okay, uh, great, Ricky, can you hear me? All right, I got the thumbs up, all right, good. All right, so uh, my name is Steve Volk. I'm the Communications Director for Citizens Climate Lobby. And the, the second lever that we're going to talk about for political will is media. We work with uh, print and digital media in order to drive the conversation towards carbon fee and dividend. So this involves writing letters to the editor and op-eds, meeting with editorial boards, pitching story ideas or doing television and radio interviews, and leveraging social media. So. Why is media important? Uh, members of Congress use the local newspapers, radio and TV stations, and social media to get a, a pulse of what is happening in their district. Uh, a staffer will review the media every day, especially you know, the stuff that might mention a member of Congress by name, and they'll provide a summary to the member of Congress. So some of the related media activities might include uh, becoming a point person for a local newspaper to watch for opportunities for writing letters to the editor and uh, and i would really encourage uh, groups to form letter to the editor teams and so when there is a letter to the editor opportunity they can pass that on to several members of of your team and you can get a number of lte 
submissions that way. And that improves the chances that you'll get something published. Uh, the next thing would be um, writing your own letters to the editor, not just being a, you know, the person who finds the opportunities, but also writing letters to the editor and op-eds of your own. Um, then there's getting to know your editorial board and key reporters at your local uh, or, or state newspaper and developing those relationships with the media uh, that are going to uh, pay off for you in the long run. And, and a part of that would be, you know, once you've developed that relationship with an editorial board and you have somebody on the editorial board that you communicate with, from time to time, we have media packets uh, that revolve around our issue and something that's happening in the news. So you could pitch these media packets to editorial writers to generate uh, editorials endorsing CCL's policy. So another thing that, uh, that you can do is uh, watch out for opportunities to be interviewed on television or radio and, and, and it pitch those, uh, those story ideas. And then last, of course, is social media. You can use your social media accounts to promote CCL and to interact with your local or national news outlets and to also engage your members of Congress, as, as Ashley was pointing out. So if you want to get support for generating print media, I recommend joining the print media action team on CCL Community. And uh, we offer uh, a support call once a month on the third uh, Monday of the month. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. So back to you, Ricky. All right. Uh, thanks, Steve. Hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, so that's me uh, on the screen right there. I, I don't have uh, as fun as a picture as Steve does, but um, my name is Rick Bradley. I'm one of the uh, IT folks with Citizens Climate Lobby and focus a lot on our uh, web development and, and uh, obviously our our Citizens Climate University training series. So um, I'm going to talk to you briefly. If you, if, if you guys have been around for CCL for quite a while, um, you know that we've had these levers of political will, and we've talked about in the past that we've had three of them. We've, it's been, um, you know, uh, lobbying, media, and outreach. Um, and, and then we, we uh, thought, well, wait a minute, chapter development and, and our groups are so important. But now, um, now that the endorsement program has come along, we've really realized that there's really two different types of outreach as well. And that, um, so that's really uh, what we're going to talk about here, myself and Stephanie next. So the first uh, uh, part of outreach is what we're going to begin calling our grassroots outreach, right? And this is probably very familiar to everyone. This is us recruiting and educating the public on climate solutions, how to participate in your democracy, um, you know, and how to be a, how to be a citizen, right? And, and how to do those things, and how to educate others, and and do um, public speaking or or tabling. Um, this is really important because you know this is our opportunity to reach out and to tell our, our CCL story, right? And to personally connect with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and possibly a lot of people that feel uh, really disenfranchised about. How do they make their voice heard? It, it, it seems like, you know, it, it, it is a difficult thing to do nowadays. So it's, this is our opportunity to reach out to those folks and, and to show them a way in a, in a, that we've learned how to do it in a way that's really effective. Um, it's a very successful way to, like I said, reach out to, to new volunteers. And it's that whole, you know, educating the public about uh, democratic engagement, even if it's not on our issue, I think it's a worthwhile cause as well, right, to get them involved. So a couple of things you can do for, uh, you know, the grassroots outreach lever. Um, obviously tabling, so this is exactly what it sounds like, setting up a table at an event, having literature, um, training yourself to, to learn how to start conversations with people, how to listen to people to really find out, you know, why they're there and um, if CCL is something for them. Uh, you know, not, it's not always uh, a recruitment opportunity. A lot of times tabling is just about educating people. A lot of people like to take information and come back three months later and ask questions after they've had time to digest it. So, you know, tabling can have lots of different um, objectives. You could also, uh, for grassroots level, uh, train to be a public speaker um, and delivering public presentations. We have a whole, uh, another action team, as Steve just mentioned, a print media action team. We have an action team that's totally develop, uh, dedicated to proactive outreach and, and uh, delivering um, uh, presentations to different organizations. So if that's something you'd like to do as well, it's another way to get involved. But 
you know, let's face it, not everyone is very comfortable with going out and speaking to a, a bunch of people, possibly people you don't know. Uh, it can be very intimidating. So there's a lot of organization that has to go into setting up events, tabling events and public speaking events. So possibly this is something or a way that, uh, that you can get involved as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie Doyle, and Stephanie is going to really talk to us about our newest lever of political will, that being uh, Grass Tops Outreach. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, Ricky? Yes, we hear you great. All right. Awesome. Um, I'm Stephanie Doyle, and I'm our Senior Outreach Liaison. I'm located in D.C. Uh, and the fourth lever that I'm going to talk about is Grass Tops Outreach, um, and this means educating building partnerships with and gaining the support of community leaders and non-governmental organizations, both nationally and locally. And the key difference between grassroots and grass tops outreach is that grass tops involves advocates or organizations with a high profile or a high level of credibility, either publicly or behind the scenes. Uh, the grass tops may not be, may be a part of the political network for a member of Congress, which is able to draw public attention to an issue or leverage connections to influence decision makers. So what makes grass tops outreach important? Uh, so because grass tops have more political influence and can carry our message for us, this is what makes them extremely important. Uh, because the persuasive power of messaging largely hinges on recipients having shared values or a shared political identification, um, that's what makes working with other organizations really useful. Um, so some opportunities for grass tops outreach can include identifying key experts and leaders in your community and seeking their endorsement as a way of influencing your member of Congress. And this can be endorsements for climate action or for our specific policy. Um, you can educate those same leaders locally about our proposal and talk about how it's going to impact their local community. And then at the national level, uh, for the most part, building partnerships with non-governmental organizations is coordinated by our DC office. Um, me and Danny work a lot with uh, organizations here, but our local chapters are highly encouraged to meet with and educate national NGOs at the local level. Um, so a lot of the Big Green and other organizations have a lot of local chapters that you can engage with. Um, yeah, and so next up is Madeline, who's going to introduce us to group and chapter development. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. So I'm the program director for Citizens Climate Lobby. And, uh, you know, these levers in a lot of ways describe our program, but it's, it's the volunteers, it's you guys who uh, really make everything happen. So a lot of my job is basically about making sure that you have what you need uh, to, to make things happen in the field, to build political will. So again, the fifth lever uh, is group or chapter development. We use those terms uh, interchangeably, really. And you know, it takes people to push or pull on a lever. And so it's our groups that bring together the people who do all the activities that we've been discussing here. So you know, a group uh, really can vary in size. It could be just one person. We've had some very effective people do that uh, until they got more. Uh, up to several dozen volunteers. And they meet regularly to plan meetings with members of Congress, to generate media, and to develop the skills that they need to build political will for a livable world. So why is chapter development critical? Well, you know, if there's no people, then there's nothing happening with those levers. The more people we have, the more it becomes possible to push or pull on the other four levers for building political will. And chapters, you know, they also play a really important social role and help us improve our, what you might call our advocacy well-being. Just when you think about it, it's way more fun to, and more hopeful to work together as a team to build political will than it is to do that by yourself. So some opportunities for group development include uh, helping with hosting the meetings, which could be setting up, cleaning up, doing publicity, printing materials, contacting members, even providing food. Those are all very helpful things for the meetings to go well. Uh, helping with chapter communications, inviting new members uh, to the meeting, which really hopefully everybody in the group is doing. 
uh, responding to inquiries and requests for information, and that could be by phone or by email or by setting up a coffee date. I think the more personal that can be, the better it's going to work. Uh, and, and lastly, one of the important things is mentoring new members, and that would be by getting to know them, uh, by helping them get the information that they need, and helping new members find ways to participate in the work, because that's really what we all came together for, is, is to take action. So, I, you know, these levers of political will, one of the things that's useful about them is they can serve as a framework for organizing the work in your chapter. For example, where there's just one or two people starting out with CCL in a community, uh, they might decide to focus mostly on one lever or to do just a little with each one or even to alternate from month to month, like which le lever they're putting their attention on. But it helps you to think about the different activities. And then when new people join, you can find out which levers they're most interested in and help them get started uh, there. Uh, and then if a group has grown to have dozens of people, well, then you could structure the, um, the work that people do into teams. Uh, could be organized by each lever. So you might have a media team or an outreach team or a lobbying team. And then, uh, you know, sometimes in places where the groups are well established, volunteers have also decided to uh, have a team that works on group development in other communities, so an expansion team. Uh, that's another aspect of group development. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to you, Ricky, and uh, we'll see what questions and comments we have. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. So, um, you know, we did a very high-level overview of the, the levers of